Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about gardening, botanical history, and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and today is September 16th. Today, we celebrate a German naturalist and two American female landscape architects. We'll hear an excerpt about September from a modern Southern writer whose stories are set in the North Carolina, Tennessee mountains. We grow that garden library today with a book about walled gardens, and then we'll wrap things up with the birthday of an American plantsman and ecologist. His work continues to inspire the botanists who follow in his footsteps. But first, here's today's curated news. Today's curated news is a feel-good story from the Society of American Florists. This is an article that was written by Molly Olson, and it's titled, Plan for Growth and Happiness. Now, this article is a profile of Abby Chick, the owner of Blake Morris Flowers in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Abby says that when the pandemic hit, she rediscovered the emotional fulfillment of providing flowers. And she says, that's when I fell back in love with what I do as a florist. Now, this revelation had major consequences for Abby because she decided to reevaluate what she wanted from her business. She met with mentors and a variety of teachers, and she kept hearing the same questions being asked of her over and over again, like, who is your ideal client? And walk me through your perfect workday. Now that quest ultimately put Abby on a path to greater happiness, more consistency in her business, and more profitability. This is a fun little profile piece that can help people in any business, not just in the flower business. It's a good one. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, you can find it over in the Facebook group for the show. Just search for the word happiness, and this post from the Society of American Florists will pop right up. It's time for today's Botanical History. Here's botanical history for today, September 16th. Today is the birthday of Engelbert Kempfer, who was born on this day in 1651. Engelbert was a German naturalist, physician, explorer, and writer, and he's remembered for his 10-year exploration through Russia, Persia, India, and Asia. And that all happened between 1683 and 1693. And that made Engelbert Kempfer the very first European to bring botanical specimens back from Japan. In fact, his book that he wrote in 1712 became an invaluable medical resource, and it offered the first flora of Japan. It featured nearly 500 plants from the island. He was also, incidentally, the first Western botanist to describe the ginkgo, one of my favorite trees. And today is also the birthday of Marion Kruger Coffin. She was an American landscape architect, and she was born on this day in 1876. Marion was one of two women in her 1904 landscape architecture class at MIT. And since most architecture firms didn't hire women, and she was aware of that, Marion started her own practice in New York City, and she became one of the first working female landscape architects in America. Marion started out with small projects in the suburbs of Rhode Island, and she ended up as the most in-demand landscape architect for the East Coast elite. Her client list included the Fricks, the Vanderbilts, Marjorie Merriweather Post, the Huttons, and the DuPonts. Today, her legacy includes many of her Delaware commissions. Gibraltar in Wilmington, Delaware, the University of Delaware campus, Mount Cuba, and Winter Tour. 
Marion Kruger Coffin's life story is fascinating. In fact, in 1955, author Nancy Fleming expanded her Radcliffe thesis and wrote Money, Manure, and Maintenance. It was a book about Marion Coffin's gardens, and the title was a reference to the three ingredients that Marion thought necessary for a successful garden. Marion once observed, the shears in the hands of the average jobbing gardener are indeed a dangerous implement. As much devastation can be done in a few moments as will take an equal number of years to repair. This I have observed to my sorrow. And today is the birthday of another female American landscape architect. This time it's Annette Hoyt Flanders, who was born on this day in 1887. So she was 11 years younger than Marion. Now, Annette was born in Milwaukee, and like Marion, she started out working on all types of gardens in the Midwest and out East before finally earning the recognition she so well deserved. For her design of the French gardens on the McCann estate, she received the Architectural League of New York's Medal of Honor in 1932. Ten short years later, Annette was featured in an article in a newspaper called The Record out of New Jersey. Now, this post came out during World War II, and Annette gave some advice to her fellow gardeners. She wrote, Hold on to every bit of beauty you've got. Don't tear up your gardens. We're going to need gardens more than ever. And what's more, we can't afford to create an economic crisis by throwing out of work hundreds of people who are dependent for their livelihood on things we need for our gardens. And she also once said, real beauty is not a matter of size. A tiny, inexpensive garden can be just as beautiful as a big one. It's time for today's Unearthed Words. Today's Unearthed Words come to us from the Appalachian author Sharon McCrum. This is a book from her ballad series. It's called King's Mountain, and it came out in 2013. Here's an excerpt. There is a time in late September when the leaves are still green and the days are still warm, but somehow you know that it is all about to end, as if summer was holding its breath. And when it let it out again, it would be autumn. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Walled Gardens by Jules Hudson. This book came out in 2018, and it's from the National Trust. In this book, Jules Hudson of the BBC shares some of the most spectacular walled gardens throughout England and Wales. Now, in the past, these gardens were vital to sustaining family life, not only for food, but also for medicine and beauty. And in the late 18th century, these gardens became synonymous with wealth as the elite sought to grow exotic fruits right in their own backyard. Over time, these kitchen gardens were enhanced with glass houses and heated walls. The level of creativity, commitment, and charm reflected in these gardens are evident still today. This book is 240 pages of walled kitchen gardens in all their glory. You can get a copy of Walled Gardens by Jules Hudson and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $12. Great price. (music) 
finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today is the birthday of Frederick Edward Clements, who was born on this day in 1874. Frederick was an American plant ecologist and a fascinating person. In 1916, he introduced the concept of a biome to the field of ecology. He also helped pioneer the study of vegetation succession. He believed that his botanist wife, Edith, would have been a world-renowned ecologist if she hadn't devoted so much time to help him. But together, they traveled across America, researching and teaching the next generation of ecologists. For field work, Frederick devised a technique that's known as the quadrant method. What you do is you pound four stakes into the ground, wrap a string around the stakes, and then tally the number and kinds of plants in the square. And today, Professor John Vucetich from the College of Forest Resources and Environmental Science at Michigan Technological University still marvels at the power and scale of Frederick's work. He wrote, To draw a string around that many sets of stakes, to sit down before a small patch of earth that many times, to get down on the level with plants, to take a quick look, gain a gestalt, and then engage in the deliberative task of touching every single plant, recognizing its species name and writing it down, pressing pencil to paper once for each individual. To do that not for a weekend, not a few dozen times, but to perform that meditation thousands of times over a lifetime. There is no more intimate, more mesmerizing way to connect with nature. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Maple Grove in Wyoming, Minnesota. If you want to read today's show notes, just head on over to thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. And don't forget that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. Last but not least, you can always get in touch by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.